Hello everyone, how are you guys? Welcome to another video, another story time video, okay? Um, you know that when I'm driving, I like to take the moments when I'm returning home to either go live or, you know, do a little video for this channel. Um, and that's what I'm gonna do right now, you know? Of course, I'm driving, so I'm sorry if I'm not looking at the camera, but you know, a bitch is trying not to die. And um, yeah, that's pretty much what I'm gonna be doing, okay? So anyways, guys, if you have been following my series of travel vlogs, um, you know that my last travel vlog was of Cartagena in Colombia, right? And the one before that one was to San Andres Island. So I kind of like, um, I have been receiving some questions, you know, about what really happened between San Andres and Cartagena and why my husband didn't come with me to Cartagena. So I kind of like wanted to answer some of those questions, you know, with a little story time. Just like what I did with the travel vlog of you know. Um, that's what I love with you guys, is the questions, or some questions. book another night in the hotel that's how expensive it was uh, because of the Bad Bunny concert that was going on in Medellin at the time you know so we decided to go to San Andres uh, my mother-in-law was actually waiting for us in San Andres she was there with some friends because she was going to be celebrating her birthday you know so she was already there with some friends and we were just gonna go there and meet her you know and just kind of like you know have some fun and and then we were gonna continue our trip uh to cartagena and then uh again to bogota right oh girl okay so we left medellin we arrived to san andres san andres is an island in the middle of the caribbean and it belongs to colombia okay it's a beautiful beautiful island uh, the ocean, they say that the, it has seven different colors. Like when you're flying, you can actually see all the colors of this ocean, you know? And uh, I mean, it's a it, it's a Caribbean. So, you know, you're expecting beauty everywhere, right? And it's very cheap when you are traveling with dollars or euros, you know, it's, it's very cheap to go over there. And we arrive and our surprise, we arrived at night and it was uh, a, a, a little bit rainy, you know, and our surprise was that for the next two days, there was going to be a hurricane passing through the island. So, yeah. So initially we're gonna stay, we're gonna stay there for four days, but because we have to like come earlier, we end up staying for five days in total. But now, two of those five days were going to be raining all the time, you know? So the island was not in the sand, like in the eye of the, of the storm. But you know, the hurricane, the tail was going to like, you know, um, hit the island. So you cannot go out. It was a very heavy raining, a lot of wind, you know? So it was, the beginning was a little bit again crazy and we are coming with all of the stress from Medellin so it was now raining and now a hurricane and we cannot do anything the internet was horrible which in itself is very stressful to us because I mean we live from the internet you know I mean you know that we have to upload videos for our channels every day 
it was horrible like i think on that trip you know that i usually do between five to six videos to my other channel uh i think if i upload four videos the whole five days was too much that's how slow that internet was it was horrible you know uh the cable was not working i mean it was so bad at the beginning you know so it was rain 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 there is nothing that we could do and but after that things kind of got a little bit better for a quick second you know so like basically we go and you know the sun is finally out and on the third day you know we are excited what are we gonna do now you know and, and i decided to rent uh these little boats i don't I, the name is shit i forgot the name of the little it, it's like a boat but it's like a nice little boat you know and you have your own music and they take you around and, and they take you to these places in the ocean and uh, where you like go and swim with the fishes and the sharks and the whole thing you know um i, I forget the name but it's very common over there and um again when you're going with dollars it's not that expensive you know so it was like a little less of 300 dollars for the day and so i decided to to rent one you know oh actually wait i'm a little confused i think the first day we just went around the island eat food that was pretty much it and then the next day we did the boat yeah the boat is amazing guys like it literally uh take you to the middle of the ocean there is this little place that is called the aquarium and it's basically like a place where all of these little boats hang out and there is like music and party and everyone is drinking and drinking in the ocean and they sell they have a little like like bar boat bar selling alcohol you know and it's it's just insane but it's so good and they they <coughs> they keep everything clean um they make sure that there is no garbage or anything you know because it's the ocean and they really respect the ocean and everything over there in the island so they make sure that everything is you know very nice uh, maintained um but it's crazy you know i mean here at least here in the united states you cannot even drink on the beaches you know it's like like they're so like no you can do anything like fine 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 you know but over there you can do whatever the fuck you want you know so like you can get drunk on the on, uh, on the beach you can get drunk on the boat you can do whatever you want you know and it's i mean it's so cool so uh we have a fantastic time you know and those days on the island were really cool because we were celebrating celebrating my mother-in-law you know uh we went to restaurants the food is delicious guys i don't know if you already watched that travel vlog but if you haven't go and watch it because it's really really like it's such a beautiful um place and everything is so good you know uh so at the end of this trip we were supposed to go to cartagena right and it was a whole deal because my husband got sick on like the fourth day you know i think with his ear and and he it was completely like 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 he felt like he was kind of like obstructed but he was like hearing noises and clickings and he was very stressed and he was like got getting very sick and it was like a very like what are we going to do now so this is the point guys we were going to cartagena because my husband never went there i was there once but like 20 years ago plus and it was the birthday of one of my best friends you know so as a gift we gave him the trip so we bought his ticket we reserved the hotel we did everything my best friend lives in colombia you know so it was very easy for us to do all of this and everything was already paid for so when my husband got sick the first thing that we tried to see is like what can we do can we cancel this like i have no idea you know but it was, at the same time we felt super bad for my best friend because he was super excited for this you know and and i mean how you 
give someone a trip as a birthday present and then you're like oh sorry we're not doing that anymore you know but then we call and they the hotel the airline they were like no we, you cannot get your money back it's non-refundable i mean so we started being like okay what are we gonna do so our trip was supposed to be i don't remember the exact day but let's say it was a monday no actually it was i think it was like a, a thursday yeah our trip it was supposed to be on a thursday Oh, I remember why. I'm going to tell you later. That This is a funny part. But it was supposed to be on a Thursday. And it was supposed to be at like 9 p.m., you know? So my husband, I mean, it's not like he was sick, sick. But the only problem was his ears, you know? And he, you know that he suffered from anxiety and all of that. So, like, he was getting, like, a very hard time, you know? And he was getting very scared to fly. So, um... My husband, I mean, we decided let's go to a doctor tomorrow morning. And if he clears you to fly, then you you come with me to Cartagena, you know. If not, her mother was going to be, his mother, I'm sorry, was going to be staying in San Andres for another week. So he could stay there a little bit longer. And then we will meet later either in Cartagena or Bogota depending on, you know, how was he feeling. So, um, we was, we were going to do that. And then out of nowhere, I decided, well, I decided to go and, and check my flight or our flight, you know. And it was my surprise that the airline changed our flight from 9 p.m. to 7 a.m. And I didn't receive any notification or absolutely anything, you know? So, of course, I was super upset. But this is one of those very cheap airlines. And it was a Colombian airline that it, it doesn't exist anymore. And communicating with someone was almost impossible. We didn't know what to do. So, at the end of the day, my husband said, you know what? I'm going to stay here with my mom. You go and if the doctor clears me tonight i will fly tomorrow or if not well i'm still gonna stay here for you know some extra days with my mom so i was like are you sure he said yes just do it i mean there's nothing else that we can do and we already promised this birthday trip to my best friend so like what can we do you know so that's what we did, you know, I ended up like, you know, traveling next day, early in the morning. Not only this airline, the, the name of the airline was Viva Colombia. They don't exist anymore. They go broke because of their broke ass, you know, and their bad service. But these bitches, girl, my flight was San Andres, Cartagena, direct. It was like literally like a, I think it was like an hour of an hour long flight or something super short right they canceled that flight and they put me on the 7 a.m flight that was san andres bogota then i had to stay in bogota for five hours and then bogota cartagena like the most stupid flight ever you know and there was no other flight so that was the only they, they literally canceled all the direct flights between San Andres and Cartagena. I was livid, guys. I was fighting so much. And the only thing that they could do for me was, you know, they, they, they end up saying for my husband's ticket that maybe that instead of canceling, they, they couldn't give me the money back, but they were going to give me a credit. So at least we said, well, at least when, you know, my husband was ready to fly. We were going to be able to use that um, that credit, right? Girl. Um, so anyways, all, all day flying. So basically, I, I, I lost another day because now I have to go. Like from San Andres to Bogota, it's almost three hours flight. And then we have to go like wait five hours in Bogota and then Bogota, Cartagena. So and it, it was like a whole deal. It was a whole thing, you know, and I arrived finally to Cartagena by myself. And then I kind of like, 
I had it in the back, um, the back of my mind, but I never, like, I, there was so much stress that I didn't realize it until that night. That Thursday was Thanksgivings. Mm -hmm. Now, if you know me or if you follow me on social media, you know that the holidays are my thing, you know? I prepare everything, I cook everything, I decorate everything. I'm the one who has the spirit of everything, you know? So, all my friends usually depend on me because I'm the one who hosts Thanksgivings, right? Of course, we were traveling. Everyone already know that they were tra that I was traveling. So, they, they, of course, did their own Thanksgivings, right? Well, guys, now I am in Cartagena alone because my husband was not there and my best friend actually was arriving until the next day. So I was all by myself, you know, in Cartagena. And then I went to a restaurant and I ate an arepa, which it was filled with meat. And I just sit there eating my sad little arepa, watching the stories of all of my friends celebrating Thanksgivings and having fun and eating turkey. Guys, I think I have never had so much FOMO in my life. Well, maybe when I didn't went to BravoCon last year. But I, I was like so like, oh my God, you know? And then when I realized, I was like, shit, today's Thanksgiving, you know? And Thanksgiving is not a thing in Colombia. So it's not like you can find Thanksgiving food or anything over there, you know? So I was like super... Well, I'm not super, but I was like a little upset. I was a little sad, you know, and I was by myself and all day doing this and, and losing money. And I mean, the whole thing was just a little bit too much, you know. So I decided to go early to bed and I was like, you know what? Tomorrow, my best friend is going to be here. We're going to celebrate his birthday. We're just going to have fun. That's pretty much it, you know. So there is something important over here because as usual, you know, people like to have opinions, right? as I do with other people as well. <laughs> and I I found myself with some comments, you know, or, or some messages, I think it was, of people asking me, why did I left my husband behind, you know? Or why didn't he travel with me? Or like, why we didn't just cancel everything and stay together? And so I wanted to talk a little bit about that because to me, that's such a weird concept. You know, um, we are very, we have been together for 11 years, right? But we are very independent, you know? Uh, we believe on um, letting the other person do whatever they want to do, you know? Um, I don't question what he wants to do or go or dress or, or eat or whatever, you know? And I let him be. And he does the same with me, you know? And that has always been kind of like our understanding for years, you know? Also, the fact that our families live abroad, you know? So, it has not been the first time that we travel alone, right? My family lives in Germany. His family used to live in Denmark. Now, uh, some of them live in Colombia. I also have family in Colombia, you know? So, and like to me has always been kind of like, we don't have to travel together, you know? And also like work-wise, um, like sometimes we cannot travel at the same time. And also we do, we when we take our trips together, we, you know, spend a lot of time making sure that everything is perfect so we can travel together, you know? We like to take our, you know, uh, annual trip together to somewhere. But I also, like, I have to go and visit my family, you know, in Europe. And sometimes he has to go and visit his family as well, you know. And it has been, for us, it's very normal, you know. Like, one time, he had to go to Denmark and he stayed there for three months. And I didn't have any problem with that, you know. Like, someone needed to stay, like, uh, and take care of the dogs, you know, and I, and I was working, and he needed to be there for his mom because, you know, his uh, father-in-law passed away. So, it was very much, like, it's very normal. And I think in this age, because we have, you know, internet and, 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 and video call and all of that, 
I mean, we'll literally see each other every single day, you know? So when people say like, I cannot believe that you can, that you travel by yourself or how could you like left your husband or, you know, like I will never let my husband like go anywhere. I was like, girl, like stop with the toxicity. Are you that insecure that you are not gonna let your husband do absolutely anything? Because also comes to a thing with security, you know? I mean, I think that that's why we have that relationship that we trust 100% on the other person and we just basically, whatever, you know? I'm a person who loves to travel. For example, when I travel, when, when I do my trips, I love to travel. Sebastian, he likes to vacation, you know? So it's a it's a different thing, you know, because I, when you travel, I, I I I like to stay in hostels. I like to walk all day everywhere. I like to meet people. I like to I immerse myself in the culture, you know, and 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 that's how I travel, you know. And I don't care about those things. In his case, he prefers vacationing you know so vacationing is where you go and like relax and you stay in like nice hotels you know and you don't do much other other than go to restaurants and and the beach or or, or maybe a, one or two like touristy things here and there but you don't really like want to do too much you know so we travel very differently and this is the way that I am and that's something that for example that I need so we have always have this thing of like, when I say like, hey, I'm gonna do this trip. I wanna go on to these countries. I wanna do this. And he's like, that's not interest me at all, you know? So I'm like, okay. And he's like, okay. So we travel separately, right? But then we also spend time, you know, um, planning our trip where we are together, you know? So usually a year we do three, big trips you know usually one with me and my family another one with him and his family and another one that we do together you know so that's kind of like how we try to manage the whole uh, traveling thing you know and it has been working out for like years and look i i feel that every relationship is unique uh but i couldn't be with someone who wouldn't let me travel you know or that wouldn't be like, okay, if you're gonna travel, you, uh, I have to be with you, you know? I, I think that will be like so weird. So I think that's why it was so easy for us in this case with Cartagena, that he was like, you know what? Just go and, and I stay here with my mom and then we met, meet, we meet later. And that's what we did. And it, actually his ear was not good. He ended up not going to Cartagena at all. And we actually met in Bogota like a week later because he really wanted to wait for his ear or for the doctor to clear him you know and we talk every single day you know uh i was like with him for the you know doctor's appointments and all of that um but it just it is what it is right and then the next i mean i, I stay in cartagena for i think it was three days in total or two four days not three days and um you know, my, my best friend came, he was super happy. We went out, we party, um, we did the whole thing, you know, and then uh, next day it was time to go. Oh my God, I need to tell you guys this story because this one is so funny. So, my best friend is a smoker, right? I am not. I mean, I used to smoke back in college, but I kind of like, oh, was only like a social smoker, you know? But then, like, after a couple years, I was like, kind of, like, over it, and I just quit smoking, and I honestly, um, I mean, maybe if I'm, like, super drunk, I will, like, have a cigarette, but, like, super drunk, you know? And also, it helps that here, like, 99% of my friends do not smoke, so, yeah, um, but my best friend, he's a smoker, right? So we, when we went out um, and, and, and for his birthday and we party all night long, you know, we end up uh, coming back to the hotel and this guy was so drunk that he started smoking inside of the room. Now, 
many hotels around the world are non-smoking hotels, you know? So, um, he, I, I, like, I, I woke up next day and I was, like, smelling this, like, cigarette smell everywhere and I was like, shit. And the problem is when you smoke in a non-smoking room, they will charge you for it, you know? So I started like looking, but he, it's not like he smoked like a thousand cigarettes. I think he literally smoked like half cigarette, but you know how, how is the smell, you know? So I was like, shit, what are we gonna do, right? So I clean everything. I clean the, the ashes and, and, and I, I throw everything, you know? And I open the windows, you know, and I'm like trying to make everything to like stop smelling. And we needed to leave to for the airport at like 7 a.m., like super early in the morning, right? So we got everything ready and I was like, look, I don't know what is gonna happen, but if they charge us anything because you smoke in the room, you are gonna be the one who's gonna have to pay for it because I don't smoke, so it's not my problem, you know? So uh, we went down and this little girl, because look, you can be doing your job, but you can be doing your job as a bitch as well, you know? And some people, I don't know, there should be a class of how to be a, a, in customer service, you know? So this little girl, I think she was, I don't know if it's if it because she was working early or what happened, you know? But from the moment that we arrived, she was very kind of like dismissive, you know? Also, I don't know if it's be because we like, I mean, we were two men and I, I don't know if she assumed that we were together. Maybe she was homophobic. I have no idea. You know, the thing is like, she really had like a bad attitude from the beginning. And she was like, um, where is your key? You know, and we gave her, and we were like, you know, because I'm very nice. I'm like, like, hi, good morning, how are you? And my friend is even nicer than me. So I was like, yeah, blah, blah, blah. So I give her uh, the key, right? And she calls someone and she's like, okay, you have to go and check that room, okay? And, uh, and I was like, what do you mean they have to check that room? And, and she goes, so I was like, yeah, I have to check that room if you wanna go. And I was like, okay, you know? And then, of course, so some guy called her, you know, I know, and said, uh, she, she goes up to the room and then she goes down and she says, the room smells like cigarettes, okay? So you're gonna have to pay and it's going to be 200. I'm assuming that it's 200,000 pesos, which is like $50, right? Anyways, I called my friend and I was like, look, they are they are trying to charge you 200 for the smoking thing. Of course, I didn't tell her that we were smoking. I was like, what? No, I don't smoke. What are you talking about? And, <laughs> and then my friend is like, like, you know, coming to the reception. And he's like, what is going on? What is happening? And, they, and this girl is like, well, the room smells horribly like smoke. And, and you have to pay because you smoke inside of the room. You know, and all of, but she was, she was getting super agitated. I was like, girl, are you the owner of the hotel? And, and then um, she says, yeah, the, the, the thing, the, the fee is $200. $200. I'm like, first of all, why are you charging in dollars when you, your country, use Colombian pesos, okay? I am Colombian. I know how it works. These little bitches were trying to, like, steal from us. So, uh, she was like, yeah, it's in dollars. So, you have to pay $200, you know? Well, my friend almost died because $200, it's, oh, it's a million pesos. That's a lot of money. I mean, I'm going to tell you that the, the minimum salary the monthly minimum salary in colombia is two million pesos so one million pesos is half of a minimum salary it's a lot of money in colombia and remember my best friend lives in colombia so he earned in pesos 
So he was freaking out, and I don't know, these guys started making a whole scene. And I was like, well, first of all, it's his problem because I'm not gonna pay, but I am not gonna leave him, you know, hanging dry. So I was like supporting him, you know, and he, she, he's like, we didn't smoke, that's a lie, where is the proof, where is this, you know? And I was like, yeah, I mean, I don't smoke, I have no idea. And then my friend starts saying like, I am the smoker, but I didn't smoke in the room. And then he says something like, like his clothes are the one who smells like cigarette, you know? And that's why the room was smelling like cigarette, but they, they never smoked, like he never smoked in the room. Girl, we already stressed because we have to go to the airport or we're gonna lose our flight. This girl says like, well, if you don't pay then we're gonna have to call the police. This guy was like, like peeing himself, you know, but he's, he's, he's too strong, girl. And he was like, well, call the police, do whatever you have to do, but I'm not gonna pay, I'm not gonna pay. I didn't smoke in the room. I didn't do this, you know. Um, I mean, he was like going at it. I mean, it was, he deserves a freaking Oscar. I was like, okay, you know, I, the only thing that I, I remember me saying was like, yeah, mm-hmm. Yeah, no, he didn't smoke. Mm -mm, mm -mm. But in the in the back of my mind, I was like, bitch, if if he has to pay, he has to pay. You know, like, sorry, you know. Well, I don't know why this girl end up calling either the manager or the owner of the hotel. I have no idea, you know. And he's and 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 he's like. What is going on? It was very early in the morning. You know, the guy was super upset. And then she's like, oh, well, there is this guy's here and uh, a housekeeping is telling me that the room smells like cigarettes and they don't want to pay, you know? And, and I don't know, something happened. And she goes like, um, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Okay, sir, are you, are, are you sure, sir? Mm-hmm, okay. I don't know what, what they tell her, you know, but she ended up calling another housekeeping guy and asking her, him to go to the room because I fix everything and I throw everything away outside of the hotel. There was no cigarettes, no ashes, no nothing, you know? So when the guy goes in there, she he calls her and this is the funniest thing ever. He literally says, um, I don't know what you're talking about. It doesn't smell like anything. The room is perfect. The face of this bitch, you know, because the, the manager was on the phone listening to everything. And he, the, the guy goes like, like, so what's the problem? And she goes like, well, the thing is like when I went there, it did, sm it did smell like cigarette. And he's and he's like, oh, so you think that the housekeeping guy is telling is is, is um, not telling the truth? And she's like, um, mm, no, um, mm, mm. and he's like, it's seven a.m. Let them go. We will talk later. And I was like, yes, you will talk to him later. Okay, my friend, <laughs> guys. I know it's bad, but it's just like so funny, you know. I mean, I was like. Girl, your luck, you know, because he was like, I was like shitting myself. Like, I don't know where I was going to get 1 million pesos for paying for smoking half of a cigarette. And I was like, well, bitch, I mean, you have to learn to respect the rules. Okay. And um, it was the universe, you know, God was on our side, you know, I mean, they... <laughs> It was so funny. It was it was one of those things that I was like, oh my god, and we we um, took a taxi. Uh, we actually asked her to call us a taxi, and she didn't want it to. It, this bitch, I feel that this bitch was homophobic. You know, I think that it was something around that uh, because it didn't make sense that she was having such a bad attitude. You know, from the beginning. Um. And we end up like just taking a cab and just leaving. We have actually two different flights, but it was very close. But he has like an, I think it was like an 8 a.m. flight and mine was like 8.30 or something. So we say goodbye and then, you know, we met after in Bogota, you know. So that, 
that was the craziness. Um, I want to say about Cartagena, girl. I'm gonna be very honest. I think I was a little bit honest on the on the on the blog, but I want to be a little bit more honest here and say that Cartagena is such a beautiful city, right? And the food was amazing, but bitch, the amount of people over here is insane, like crazy, guys. And not only that, the bitch was probably the worst experience I have had in a bitch ever. Every two minutes, guys, every two minutes, there was someone trying to selling us something in front of us, uh, cocktails, um, jewelry, um, all kind of shit. There was these girls offering massage and they literally will go and touch you like unwanted you know like they literally will just go and try to start massaging you you if you ever go to Cartagena do not let anyone touch you guys okay and apparently there were like big pocket big big pockers big well what how you say that people who still shed you know it was so so bad and also it is very known guys in Cartagena that they try, the, the people who work there, especially on the beaches and all of that and the little restaurants, they try to make the prices higher because they know that you are tourists. They know that you are paying in dollars. There has been several accusations. One time, this American um, couple, I think, or friends or whatever, they were going to a restaurant and they were trying to charge them, I think it was like almost $500 for two plates of food, some cocktails, and, and, and that's it, you know? And it was, it was a big thing, like it went, it went on, on, on the news and everything because of course, like this, two, like who is gonna pay $500 for like two plates of fish, you know? Uh, but it happened. It really, it, even it happened to us. They were trying to like, like rent us a couple like chairs and an umbrella for like eighty dollars when everyone was paying like twenty five. So because we were Colombian, we were like able to like talk, you know, and like they knew that they couldn't f fuck with us. But you have to be very careful, guys. If you go. Every restaurant that you go, everything that you want to buy or get, make sure you they show you the price in advance before ordering, before eating, before drinking, before even sitting. Make sure that they show you how much do you have to pay because it could be bad, okay? So just want to like uh, let you guys know that. And it's so sad because the city is it's a beautiful city, you know? Uh, it's a very colonial style, you know? It has a lot of history. Um, go and watch the, the travel blog if you want to because you will see a lot. There is a lot of history. There is a lot of, uh, like, beautiful things. Um, but these people... And I, I get it, you know, there is a lot of, of, of poverty in, in Colombia. People are trying to find a way to get you know, money to survive and all of that. It's not like the government is really helping that much. So I get it, but it's not the right thing to do, you know? And I feel that if these people will understand that, more people will go and things will be better. But sometimes the desperation is so big and it's so many people looking for the same thing that it just go through this bad thing. So if you are... American, if you are European and you don't speak Spanish and you have an accent, you know, and all of that, be careful, you know? It's not like, I mean, they're not gonna kidnap you. It, that doesn't happen. It's not like uh, the stories of Mexico or stuff like that, no. Um, but, you know, be aware of the situations, okay? Um, and I think that's pretty much it, guys. That's really what happened in Cartagena. That's why I didn't travel with my husband. And yeah, that's pretty much it. 
So let me know what you guys think in the comments below. If you have more questions, ask me those questions. Go and watch the travel blogs, the travel work from San Andres and for uh, Cartagena are already out there and ready, you know, for you to watch it. Give it some love, you know. Um, leave me all your comments on those videos as well. Give it likes, share it everywhere, and let's keep this family growing, okay? So thank you for watching, and I'll see you around. See ya. Bye.